It's a pleasure to present um, Ariana and Laura and this seminar, who is, uh, of course, part of the Transgang project, um, but also is related to some recent publications that uh, Ariana will will explain later. And um, I also uh, will say welcome to the um, Transgang researchers, but also the uh, invites uh, by other uh, networks like Eurogang and, and, and other scholars. Uh, a short presentation of the speakers. Uh, Ariana Fernandez Planes is an um, associate professor of media studies at the Un Polytechnic University in Valencia. She holds a um, bachelor's in arts in journalism and, and a master in social communication and uh, a PhD in communication from Pompeu Fabra University. By the way, I have the honor and the pleasure to have been one of the advise, advisor with um, Monica Figueras of uh, their, their uh, thesis uh, on, uh, on the 15 May movement in Barcelona. Ariana teach um, journalism, interactive communication and new media. She has carried out research into social movements, youth and virtual communication. And currently she is undertaking research on the mediated role of gang members as a researcher of our uh, trans gang project. The discussion of this session will be Laura Perez Altave, that she is also a lecturer and researcher in Digidoc Research Group at the UP, UPF. She received a PhD in social communication from UPF in, some years ago with a thesis about social movements and network analysis in the context of the so-called Arab Spring in Tunisia. Her doctoral thesis obtained the extraordinary doctoral thesis award from the UPF. She's a, she has published uh, her research in several indexed journals and she has participated in national projects dedicated to the study of media and network uh, society. This is the first seminar, Transgang training seminar of this uh, semester. So it's heavy to start again with virtual uh, online communication, but in this case, it's very coherent with the uh, object of study. So Ariana, you have the, the, the possibility of explain what is going on about this uh, research on gangs and social media. Okay, thank you, Carlos. I'm going to share my, my slides. A minute. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm really happy to be here and uh, to have the opportunity to share the results of this research. Um, usually, this, as, as you already explained, Carles, uh, these seminars sometimes are, are, are internal seminars, but today we decided to open, so welcome everybody. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so I'm going to introduce the, the topic and what we are going to do uh, today here. So the seminar, uh, as you said, Carles, uh, is uh, firstly aimed to present the, the results of the paper uh, we have recently published in New Media and Society. And also, uh, secondly, uh, with Laura Perez, but also with all of you, the idea is to discuss the challenges emerging for the study of camps online in the Transcamp project. Um, as an introduction to the topic of this seminar, we can say that the internet and social media are transforming social relations and the way in which people, especially the young, interact. Of course, uh, this also applies for urban gangs who have adopted uh, this new communicative practice as part of their everyday experiences. Gangs uh, with a presence on the earliest social networking sites, such as uh, MySpace, nowadays also have presence in the newest networking services. It could be in part because the online 
a universe can offer gang members a space in which they can construct their digital identity. Actually, unlike the traditional media, digital platforms offer these gangs a place for cultural construction via self-representation and their online practices. Together with this trend, gang literature is reflecting the importance of social media in gang life lifestyle. That's why a general overview of research outcomes in this field is needed. Uh, in response to this, the present study seeks to provide an updated literature review about gangs in social media. Uh, we also seek to identify methodological publications that develop research protocols for studying gangs online. Thirdly, we aim to determine the specific parameters, dimensions and variables employed in the research protocols of the studies uh, of gang use of social media, such as topics, methods, media under study, privacy issues and so on. And finally, we seek to reveal the structural characteristics of the research community publishing on this topic, the location, size, authors, etc. And of course, as I already said, I would like to discuss the next steps for research and gangs in social media in this project. Okay, but uh, how, how, how have we carried out this literature review? Okay, so the first step was the selection of the sample. Uh, so involved identifying, identifying the academic literature on gangs and social media. To do so, we created a list of topic-related terms, which we divided into sections. On the one hand, that related to gang research, and on the other, uh, that related to social media. Uh, these terms were extracted from the titles, abstracts and keywords. And finally, we have a total of 16 uh, terms and we defined a complex uh, search query combining all these terms. Later, we submitted the query to Scopus and well, the, the, you can see the search query syntax in the slide in blue. Uh, so at the end of the process, we had a total of 251 uh, unique documents. However, a significant number of publications uh, were not related to social networking sites. Um, so we then undertook a manual review to exclude all non-relevant documents, as well as those documents that uh, could not be accessed online or weren't in English. Uh, so the final set includes a total of 73 references. Okay, the second step uh, involved a uh, qualitative and quantitative content analysis of the selected reference. To do so, we created an evaluation model comprising a set of variables and categories covering a comprehensive uh, number of dimensions related to the research designs of the studies. Uh, here you can see the evaluation model but uh, I know it's, it's, it's difficult to see. Uh, you can check it on the paper. Here is the, the table download for the, from the paper. So you can see that we have many variables and categories. Uh, so for example, we have population under study, level of description, topic, subtopic, um, methodology, uh, techniques, uh, gang name, gang sample, content sample, region of study, country of study, spread, well, media of analysis, social media profile top, typology, um, ethics, participation of gang members, privacy, um, well, there are many, many, so you can check it uh, later if you, if you want. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, we have a third step uh, that involves uh, undertaking a bibliometric analysis of the academic literature. And we only considered uh, literature indexed in the Scopus database. Uh, that means that only 42 documents were analyzed in this bibliometric analysis. But let's move to the main result, results of the study. As expected, the literature examining gangs on, on social media focuses mainly on gangs as the primary object of the study. 63 of 73 publications with gangs being typically considered as group or collective. 
rather than as individuals. And to a lesser degree, the literature focuses also on institutions such as the police, law enforcement agencies, or academia, social workers, and so on. But um, when talking about topics covered, the literature about guns and social media faces a range of different topics. Um, it stands out the use that gangs make of social media, uh, in the slide is purpose, with 53 publications. Among these publications that we categorize as purpose, um, scholarly, uh, scholars especially focuses on criminal online activities of gang members and the links between their social media use and offline violence. We can also find among these studies publications focusing on the use of social media for identity construction, for expressing grief and mourning, uh, for glorifying gang life, and for recruiting new members. Uh, but other topics detected in the literature include the former actual social media use with 14 uh, publications, or the potential use that the police and law enforcement uh, forces might make of social media. Uh, studies also seek to develop research protocols and methods for studying gangs online. And some scholars have also studied the network of a specific gang by tracing their relationships and identifying opinion leaders and by targeting communities, uh, locations and groups. Few studies uh, also address the challenges and opportunities of social media as agents for social intervention as, and mediation. Um, and typically this topic is raised for, this, for discussion, being identified as an important issue for future exploration rather than the study's main focus. Finally, gender studies remain also under study in this field. Okay. Um, focusing on the methods, qualitative approaches predominate among the studies of gangs and social media with 40 publications, followed by mixed methods and quantitative methods. Um, yeah, sorry, quantitative. Among the um, qualitative techniques, we find, for example, qualitative content analysis and textual analysis, interviews, qualitative literature reviews. Among the quantitative methods, machine learning is the most frequently used technique, followed by surveys and social network analysis. Uh, but we also studied uh, the samples used in the studies. And we have detected that the United States is the country in which most fieldwork field uh, has been conducted, 33 publications, followed by Canada and the United Kingdom. Second, and many publications do not, in fact, specify the name of gangs under a study, preferring to reference the city, the community, or the particular gang family, such as bikers. However, when a gang is mentioned, we find a prevalence of African American and Latino gang names. Third, as expected, the literature is based mainly on online research. It's, 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 just normal, no? Followed by research that combines both online and offline study of gangs. Uh, fourth, uh, Twitter is the most frequently studied media platform, followed by Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, MySpace, blogs, and the web. Fifth, most publications describe individual profiles, followed by um, combined personal and institutional profiles, and thus uh, describing only institutional profiles. And six, the number of gang members studies and the size of the content of the content and their analysis um, can vary greatly, ranging from just one or a few users to a much uh, larger sample. But let's move to ethical issues, that is one of the main uh, focus of this uh, seminar. As uh, researchers, when dealing with the analysis of social media posts, we always need to have in mind the privacy and respect of the participants' rights, but especially when studying youth street groups. Anonymity is one formula for protecting them, but our analysis shows that there are more publications that fail to anonymize or only partially anonymize participants than publications in which both users and their content are anonymized. That's the table. You can see the, the results on table two. 
The active participation of uh, gang members in the research process is another formula for addressing the ethical concerns. However, according to our analysis, only six of the 73 publications acknowledge it, uh, including in the research uh, team, a gang member. And institutions are even less involved in the research process. As a matter of fact, a few publications discuss the ethical issues associated with the research. We should, we should stress, however, that the fact that these other studies didn't explicitly mention any ethical concerns or protocols does not necessarily imply that their authors did not adhere to ethical and methodological protocols. Meaning that, okay, maybe they use, but they don't specifically say it at the paper or at the chapter. Okay, moving to the bibliometric analysis, uh, we have detected that the earliest publication dates from uh, 2009 and compares Sunni extremists, jihadis, and Mexican-American street gang members, Cholos, use of YouTube. Uh, this pu uh, publication date points to a significant delay in the emergence of this line of research, especially if we consider that the first social networking site, the Six Degrees, was created in 1970 and YouTube itself was launched in, in 2005. So four years later appears the first uh, paper, the first publication related to, to gangs in social media. The United States is the clear leader in the field, accounting for 69% of publication output, again followed by the United Kingdom, Australia and Canada. And in line with this trend, the institutions with the highest number of publications are Columbia University, University of Chicago and University of Michigan. The specific centers of, or fields to which the authors are affiliated with the institution are social work, criminology and technology. Uh, inside technology, we include communication studies, computer science, and information science. And I have to say that as a researcher coming from media study and working in the Transgang project with anthropologists and sociologists, I was um, surprised by the small presence of these fields that have traditionally been linked to the object of uh, study. The set of publications uh, includes mainly journal articles, but are also book chapters, conference papers, and reviews, with a total of 93 authors, among which Patton uh, from the Columbia University stands out as being the most productive and also the most cited author with uh, 13 publications. Here you have in table three, you can see um, authors and publications, citations, authorships, etc. As I said, everything is, is on the paper, so if you want, well, at the end also, of course, you can ask <laughs> any question you have. Um, actually, Patton, um, uh, this author, Desmond Patton, has established an extensive network of co-authors, up to uh, 38, actually, 38 authors, uh, but here in this in this slide you can see like the different authors and their um, uh, their authorship network. Uh, in table in table four uh, we can see the publications with the greatest number of citations received according to uh, different um, database uh, Scopus, Google Scholar, and Web of Science. Uh, so. We can see. And as we can see, only seven publications received at least 20 citations. The article entitled Internet Banging, uh, New Trends in Social Media, Gun Violence, Masculinity and Hip Hop by Patton, et al. emerged as the most cited publication with 71 citations. The data is from uh, uh, end of uh, um, uh, 2019. Okay, and here we can see the co-citation map of documents where we can see the most cited papers that were well, according, according with the previous data, uh, Patton uh, and Piros uh, has a lot of citations. 
and finally, in this figure, we can see the terms employed by authors in the titles and abstract of their publications. We, here, we can we have detected and extracted a total uh, well, more than 1,000 terms. And social media, gang, and violence are the most frequently used. And in the case of specific media platforms, Twitter and Facebook are the most frequently employed. However, while Twitter seems uh, to be closely related to research on such topics as violence, health, and crime, and crime, Facebook seems to be more closely related to research on topics of membership, groups, and online identity. And that's something that I would like to, to highlight. Okay, and as a conclusion section, uh, our analysis of the existing publication has allowed us to identify several challenges that uh, future studies will have to face, including, of course, the Transgan project. So the first challenge um, um, is differentiating between personal and uh, group behavior in social media. Uh, again, I apologize for the, 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 the slide, uh, but it's the only way that I can uh, <laughs> put all the information together. So this table is also published in the in the paper and, and better explained. Um, so this challenge um, we refer that despite the fact that the data used by researchers and mainly extract from personal social media profiles, uh, especially in Twitter, gangs tend to be studied at the group level. This approach uh, can result in the criminalization of the inter youth street group. And furthermore, uh, data need to be placed in context as gang members can modify their behavior according to the audience and uh, if uh, it is public or private, if the information is going to be uh, public or not. The second challenge is expanding coverage of topics and communities. Uh, the literature review shows that research to date in this field is primarily interested in how gangs use social media and what they actually do online, with a particular focus on the relationship between violence on and offline. Uh, however, however, in line with the interest of the Transgang project, few studies uh, have addressed the challenges and opportunities of social media as agents for social intervention and mediation. Similarly, the potential of social media as a tool for the construction of gang identity uh, uh, to, counter, uh, to counter the, pro the portrayals of gangs offered by the traditional media, such as TV series or news, etc., and need to be also more explored. Um, future research will also seek to explore questions that are currently emerging from gang and youth studies, including gender and LGBTQ plus issues. And as recent studies have uh, highlighted, future research needs to instigate uh, in a comparative approach, not only of territories, but also of the age and gender group. Um, other challenge uh, researchers have to face is selecting, reclassifying, and interpreting data. Uh, some members of the academic community uh, are warning against automatic targeting based on social media content. Here, the challenge is to overcome the typically racialized bias of automatic interpretations of data obtained from social media that can lead to the criminalization and labeling of uh, street uh, groups. Uh, accessing online social media data is other challenge that need to be faced. Uh, most of the publications reviewed are based on Twitter data. However, uh, we need to consider whether Twitter is the most frequently used platform by GAN or whether it is simply the most data accessible, accessible network services. Where in the social media are GAN members today? We can debate about this later because we, we had uh, to face this problem. Too. Data access is one of the greatest uh, challenges researchers have to face when studying gangs on social media. But in parallel, concerns about the ethics of social media studies and the privacy of participants uh, from these groups emerge in relation to the analysis of this data. 
Um, thus, we believe that research communities need to develop a more, a more consensual social media research protocol for working with um, user street group, groups in order to address concerns about privacy, anonymity, and data surveillance in the research process from the initial design to data dissemination. So we have to have in mind all these things uh, in all the process. Um, we believe that uh, a dialogue with other disciplines uh, facing similar challenges in their use of social media, such as media studies, social movement studies, and data science studies, ha can help to find the, the path altogether. Uh, another challenge is obtaining research content and involving gang members in the social media research process. As detected, few studies focusing on social media and gangs actually involve the population under study as part of the research team. We have examples, including the Transgang project, but are the less. Um, however, so where, wherever possible, uh, research should seek include them as uh, it will we believe that it will en en enhance qualitative interpretations of social media artifacts and we can also help uh, gang members uh, participate. Uh, another challenge is, e well, you can see here that uh, there are challenge risks and recommendations. I don't have time to explain all of them, but uh, at least I would like to give some, some, some ideas about them. So um, another is identifying uh, theoretical and practical implications. The introduction of analysis of the use of social media in gang studies seem li seems likely to have um, an impact on gang definitions and the work of urban ethnographers. And finally, um, fostering uh, the last challenge is fostering interdisciplinarity and international collaborations. So that's the list of, uh, of, of challenge, risk, and recommendations that we have detected. And uh, I would like to, to debate and discuss with all of you. But to, to conclude, we would like to briefly explain what's next in the Transgang project related to the social media analysis. Of course, the Transgang project is, uh, as all of you uh, know, it's, uh, it's big, but, and this is a small part that uh, we would like. So we want to, to get an accurate picture of the self-representation of the Latin Kings in social media because we are going to focus in Latin Kings first and then we will see if we expand to another uh, street groups. Um, so we will focus first on Latin Kings. So we want to understand how Latin Kings members use social media and interact with social media uh, population. Um, having in mind these, these aims, uh, we want to answer the following uh, questions. No, we, well, at least we, we would like to, 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 to answer some of them. No? For example, one of the questions uh, when we were working on the project and preparing the, 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 the methods and everything, we, some of the questions were like, are the Latin games on social media individually or as part of a group? Um, who follow, comment, or interact with Latin King members in social media, and the same with whom they interact. Um, who and how do authorities emerge in the network? Uh, what do Latin Kings use social media for? Uh, what topics do they talk about according to the actors, the moment, and the uh, event? Uh, what is the taxonomy surrounding the Latin Kings in social media? Or what kind of content do Latin Kings share on social media? Photos, links, uh, em emoji, uh, well, what else? Uh, what sentiment predominates in their social media communications? Uh, are they positive, negative, uh, complaining? What are, no? um, are there any territorial traces? So uh, street gangs usually are really territorial, but, but what happens when we go online? Um, uh, related to, 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 to gender issues, how is masculinity and femininity represented online among the Latin kings? And uh, thinking about the, the, the context of these groups and, and these uh, youth, um, what is their vision for the present and the future? They are young people, so what they believe, are they positive that have, 
have they hope uh, about the future or, or not no so this is of course many other questions can arise but this is some of the, the questions that I, I wanted to share with you and to know what do you think if, if you find it interesting or or, or you 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 think that uh, there is something missing so uh, to do so um, we define a protocol for virtual ethnography with Latin games first uh, together with with um, uh, Cesar and Maria uh, that are um, former members of uh, the Latin uh, Kings, um, we defined keywords related to, to this group and then a search a query for social media. Uh, secondly, we also detected video, public pages and public groups related to the Latin Kings uh, with their help always. Uh, also trying with these keywords. Uh, then uh, we decided which social media we wanted or not wanted could analyze. So we decided to analyze Twitter, uh, YouTube and Facebook. Um, um, we defined a page of analysis. In the case of Twitter and YouTube, uh, it's all. So we, 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 we we did the, the search, uh, and we have all the videos and all the Twitter, uh, all the tweets uh, uh, related to the keywords that we searched. In the case of Facebook, it was different. Uh, uh, we only analyzed one year because we did it manually. Uh, we then downloaded the data, and we are currently deciding and designing our methods of analysis, quantitative and qualitative, we decided to mix, uh, to proceed with the data analysis. So, so we are here, so we are still on time to change anything if you uh, have any recommendation or any advice. And the last step after the analysis, uh, of the, um, so we would like to validate the analysis, the results uh, together with the Latin King members via focus group or interviews. Um, we also wanted to include uh, Latin King members uh, to participate in the data analysis, but um, due to tempos, I'm not sure we, we are going to, to do it. Well, Maria has participated in the Facebook analysis, uh, but, uh, but I'm not sure it's going to be possible in the, in the, in the Twitter and YouTube analysis. Okay, um, so to finish, to conclude, I have to say that I have previously worked uh, with youth in social media, analyzing youth behavior in social media. However, it is my first time studying youth street groups or, or gangs online. Uh, and facing this research made me question our research approach and it has raised uh, many issues such as how and when should the participation of gang members be enhanced, as I already commented? Can we differentiate between gang members and public opinion for the data analysis? Because we are saying that we want to know uh, how Latin games interact, how what they talk about, but how do we know that they are uh, uh, members of the Latin game? Um, uh, then uh, there are also issues related to data access, ethics and bias in the interpretation. Uh, another question is, is public social media a reflection of uh, Joseph Street Group's uh, life, of gang life? What does it mean? And is it different from any other young person? Because they are young people are participating in the social media. Um, so what is different from any other uh, young person? Uh, is social media used by Latin Kings to counteract uh, mainstream media representations? Uh, because we believe in the potential of the social media to counteract these representations, these traditional media representations, but are they really doing that? So, as you can see, uh, many, uh, the research is really open, we have many, many questions, so you try to, to go and to, to um, to do um, your research, but then every day um, when you have to face the data, the analysis, many uh, new questions uh, arise. 
So thank you very much for your attention. And um, as I said, you have all the information on the paper. If you are interested, you can also write me. Well, more, most of you are from the project, so, so we can chat <laughs> any other day. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, I will. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. But I guess that first, uh, Laura is your. Turn. So thank you, Ariadna. Uh, uh, I start with the uh, with my intervention, or you just go away, Laura. Oh, okay. It's your, thank you. Your turn. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this seminar. It's my pleasure to sit here with all of you, and also congratulations, Ariadna, for your excellent and clear presentation. Let me start with some comments on the paper Dance on Social Media, a Systematic Literature Review and an Identification of Future ch Challenge, Risk and Recommendation. First, I would like to congratulate the authors, Dr. Ariana Fernandez Planels, Dr. Enrique Orduña Malea and Professor Carles Feixa for, for the inspiring work and for the contribution on, on the file. I think this type of paper that carry out a systematic review of the literature are very valuable and allows progress in research, in this case, of guns and social media. To start with the discussion, let me introduce uh, the first topic that uh, Ariana, you have uh, introduced uh, in your presentation, the self-representation of the members of job street groups in social media. Uh, as you have explained in your presentation, the next step of your future research has to do with getting an accurate picture of the self representation of the Latin kings in social networks. At this point, I have uh, some comments and, and questions. You are researching the Latin king as a group, but in your social and uh, your network analysis, uh, you are analyzing the individual accounts of the members. So, my concern is to what extent they identify themselves as Latin King on social media to say that they are reflecting the opinion of the group. Uh, they, so the questions are in what sense they post and the content that they share on social media are different from any other young person. Uh, what are the, the, the content that um, Different, differentiate the, uh, the position from Latin kings to uh, not to an individual, and uh, can we differentiate between gang members and public opinion for the data analysis? And if uh, can we get a reflection on gang life by analyzing the content that the, the members are, for, are posting on social media? Okay, so thank you, Laura, for your words and. <laughs> Uh, your questions, I try to answer. Of course, if uh, someone wants to participate, uh, they can. So, um, okay. First of all, I want to clarify that we still have to undertake the analysis. Um, but the questions that you uh, you express uh, are our concerns also. Um, uh, so the first question I think that you asked me, uh, 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 okay, yeah, if the posts are different from other, so how can we identify no, uh, Latin team members? Actually, we don't want to target uh, and we don't want to identify, oh, okay, this, this person is part of the Latin team because we, we don't want to, to participate in this process, but at the same time we need to 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 say that okay we are analyzing so uh, th this is something that we are uh, discussing in internally discussing because we think that okay we for example we are not doing uh, we we are doing another study that we are searching for the public opinion about gangs uh, so this is a different study uh, so okay we try we search the query the query for searching was latin kings uh, gangs uh, etc et and in this case we have searched for a specific words that it's supposed that latin king members use a uh, specific word we, we have a like a glossary of, of a specific of course we we also have latin kings but then uh, we have uh, amor de reina amor de rey uh, 
ADR uh, and so on. Um, so we expect that it supports that, the, that uh, people who are not part of these groups uh, do not use these words, but we don't know it. So probably when we present our results, we still, as I said, we still don't have it. Uh, probably we would have to say, okay, uh, gang members or people uh, surrounding, no, uh, to groups or sympathizing, no, with these groups, at least uh, to know that these words are used are used by this by, the, by these groups. But as I said, um, we don't want to to target. We are not trying to create. For example, we, we in our review, literature review, we found uh, some um, publications that are uh, focused on uh, developing a, a tool uh, to detect gang members. We don't want to do that. This is not our focus. Uh, but we want to understand, we want to, to, to better know this, this, this group, no? the Latin uh, King. Um, uh, um, also, you say, okay, individually, uh, this is part of the results, you know, that, okay, most of the research studies study uh, gangs in, actually, they uh, go to Twitter, so they have individual profiles, but then they talk about the gangs, no, like, uh, um, but they are, so, uh, this is a problem that we also have to face, no, uh, it's like, okay, uh, um, for example, in Facebook, we went with Maria and with Joao, uh, two researchers of the Transgang uh, project. Um, we went to the groups, groups that uh, um, groups where uh, Latin King members usually participate. So in this way, of course, we are analyzing individuals, but inside a group page or, or public. Uh, group that uh, that is supposed to be linked to, to Latin Kings and uh, and also moderated by members of the Latin Kings. Uh, in Twitter and YouTube it will be different and we have to see of course how how we are going to present this data no? when we uh, send a paper or a chapter or, or, or in a conference. Yes, this is something that we have to think that okay we are going to talk uh, about what Latin kings or or, or, yeah, or individually or yeah, and this is one of the challenges that we we said. And I think that in general, I I think I believe I answer all your questions. Uh, you ask me also about if uh, gangla yeah if if if. Uh, if social media posts are reflecting gang life, no? This is something we want to answer. I can't <laughs> I'm not able to answer you now. This is something we want to answer. Uh, and and in, if, if, if we will find something different from the common people, because for example, Twitter is uh, well known as a social media for for hate, no? <laughs> so uh, trolls, everything. So okay, we are going to find something different, or or not? We'll see. All right, I can come to you now. <laughs> so thank you very much, Ariana and, and Laura. Uh, we have another question, I think, that Laura wanted to. Ah, okay, okay, go away. Yes. Uh... <laughs> So the, the next question has uh, to do with the idea of public opinion and the, the members of the, of the youth speak group uh, as individuals of a group, in some, in some sense, they are operating uh, within the digital public uh, sphere. So, Arianna, do you think that this representation can counteract the mainstream media representation of youth speak groups? Um, shortly, I will say that yes, I think that uh, social media can counteract uh, these uh, mainstream media representations, but we have to see if actually uh, they do it. I'm not sure if they are, they are aware of the potential of social media to counteract this image. This, um, so I believe that, well, what I see is that there are people 
um, doing that consciously and there are others who they are on social media because they are young they are there well young or not young all of us uh, we have social media profiles so they are there without thinking if they are counteracting or not the traditional media and some of them they they know it and they try to counteract so it depends also if they are uh, um, displaying individually or a group or a, that is something that we have to decide to go yeah uh, so uh, what we just read in the, the paper, another concept that can arise uh, in, in, in the research has to do with research ethics and the privacy of individuals. Uh, when the studies of social network platforms became popular, in most cases researchers didn't take ethical considerations into account. Actually, in this point, I'm talking from my own experience. When I started researching social movements and social networks, I didn't think about it. But today, I try to take into account these ethical considerations uh, of my research. It's true that I think it's different if we are analyzing official accounts, such as the official accounts of a movement, political party or politicians, for example, of we are researching about individuals or vulnerable groups. As the paper reflects, there is a trend towards the increasingly use of privacy protocols over time. There are different strategies, anonymize the accounts, the content, paraphrase message, and so on. In this sense, researchers have to deal with another related aspect, the transparency in research. I think that the ideal formula would be to find a balance between protecting the most vulnerable and the transparency of the research process, from the data collection to the interpretation of this data. Do you have planned how to deal with this situation in, in your research? What strategies do you think are the best in relation to the treatment of your data, from the data collection to the interpretation of this data? Okay. So, yes, we are, <laughs> we are working on that. Uh, we, well, we have the ethical also, it's university, we have our ethical team, no? Uh, and the Transcam project uh, has especially fair with that, and uh, we have Adam uh, who is participating now. Uh, but also, as we are a group uh, outside uh, from the Faber University, we are in Valencia, uh, we have our own protocol. Uh, but of course, it is agreed with the Transcam project. So, first of all, um, only few researchers uh, have access to raw data. So, um, uh, we download the data uh, ethically. I mean that we uh, ha we have an account. We open it an account in Twitter as a social researcher, and we are downloading the data. Um, in YouTube, the same uh, with the API, with the official API. In the case of Facebook. We did it manually because uh, we don't have access. We apply through CrowdTangle, I think it was, but uh, they didn't give us access. So we decided to do it manually. Uh, so that's the first. Uh, like we we apply to data. We downloaded the data through APIs. Uh, official APIs, then only few researchers have access to raw data. Uh, what else? Uh, we have protocols for secure communications and data storage. That's at the previous part, no? before the analysis. Um, then we anonymize the data. So it means that if more uh, researchers are going to have access to the data, at least we are going to delete the name and the user in the link of the of the post so you can only have access to the content itself um and uh, then uh, we really have to publish the analysis well we have to undertake the analysis and then publish but we have decided that we of course every everything is going to evolve probably in one year when we are going to publish something uh, we will have more reference, reference, but um, we decided that we are going to to anonymize the user and also the content. 
so it's not going to be published in order to, to protect the the, the place on the website. Uh, um, more or less, I think that I answered your question. <laughs> uh, so the third question has to do with methods. As the paper highlights, qualitative approaches are the predominant among studies of GAN on social media. Being qualitative content analysis and textual analysis, the most frequently techniques employed. Uh, while well, I was reading this paper, uh, this part of the, of the paper, I was surprised by the low presence of the studies that the use social network analysis because I come from media studies. Uh, in this sense, I believe that when we are researching on social media, the best methods that we can employ to get a fully understanding of our object of study are the mixed methods. Uh, we can use the quantitative approach, for example, the social network analysis or service, to get the structure of this relation within the network, the, that's the, inter the interactions of the network, and combine it uh, with a qualitative approach, such as interviews of content analysis, to get the sense and meaning of these relations. What techniques have you planned employing your research? You, uh, you, uh, we will combine. You, you combine uh, qualitative and quantitative, or what is your approach to the object of a study? Yeah, I come from the studies too. So yes, we are going to use uh, work analysis and content analysis. We have worked uh, laboratory together with uh, with this kind of, of uh, well, with social movements, but. Uh, um, so the idea is to do to undertake a social network analysis in a quantitative way, but also in a qualitative way. Then the content analysis, because okay, the social network analysis uh, give us an idea of the community, but then I'm some of the questions that we that I share with you in the slides, uh, we need qualitative analysis going to the content, and but we also want to. Um, to, so the content analysis is going to, this is the part where I want uh, uh, the Street um, group members to participate in the analysis, but I'm not sure uh, we will have time. Uh, so the idea is to um, analyze this course in a qualitative way, manually, and, and, and have the, the, the analysis. Uh, but then also we want to use a more quantitative uh, Mm, uh, for example, with the taxonomy. No, we want to have a taxonomy, so this is going to be uh, automatically and quantitative, of course. So the idea is to mix all of them and then finish with a uh, more classical, also um, um, more social uh, methods, no, with research, with uh, interviews or, or social or. Um, 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 oops, sorry. Uh, group uh, to to contrast our data with uh, the opinion. Okay, so finally, uh, to conclude with this discussion, I would address a topic that I think is important to to reflect. In your paper, um, as have you pointed out in your presentations, the authors with more prominence within the scope of a study are scholars from the United States. It's true that you have performed the, the search on, on the database Scopus and Google Scholar in English language, and this is a, a bias. But uh, there are a, prom uh, a prominence of uh, scholars from the, from the United. When I read the, this result, I started to think in one concept that I have heard recently, the decolonization of academia. Actually, last week in a CREA conference, there was a round table about this concept and some scholars um, uh, reflected about this, this phenomenon, the decolonization of academia. Uh, there are some projects that have been working on this idea for a while, for example, the Big Data from the South initiative of the project COVID-19 from the margins, both uh, led by Stefania Milana and, and Emiliano Trere. Uh, thinking in, in this seminar, the project and your research, as all of you, all of us now, the Transnet project covers different contexts from the South of Europe, the North of Africa and South America. 
So how do you plan to carry out a comparative study between these different contexts? So because I think continuing with this idea of the colonization of academia, it could be an interesting idea to, to explore in the, in the future research. Okay, so first of all, um, I have to acknowledge that our bibliometric analysis was restricted to publications in that case in a scopus, uh, while our content analysis was restricted to publication in the English language. So our study is inherently biased towards English publications. Um, but uh, moving to, to, to to the analysis that we are going to, to do now and to the Transgang project. Um, this first approach is going to be only with Latin Kings um, and we don't have a comparative focus, but the idea is that after finishing this, um, this analysis, uh, we want to share in another seminar, training seminar, we want to share our methodology and our uh, results and then um, to involve another researcher from the Transgram projects that uh, are from around the globe uh, to participate and if they want to replicate and then try to have a comparative um, uh, approach. Uh, but uh, talking about the colonization, this is something that we have been talking inside the group actually with Joao and with Maria. We have sent, well, we, we have written something about that, no? Uh, using uh, authors from the South, etc. Of course, we are, even if we are South Europe, we still are Western countries, no? Uh, so I guess we have to decolonize ourselves. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting what you have said. Uh, the projects that you mentioned, uh, I know them, and, and uh, yeah, this is something that is is um, it was under the table. Now is uh, uh, in the table. So so this is something that we have always in mind in this project. And, and yeah, of course, our our aim is to have a comparative, but we are going to start uh, focusing only with uh, Latin kings. Thank you, Laura, for your questions. So I think now it's it's uh, you finish uh, both. Both of you, uh, it has been very clear Ariana's presentation and also. The, the questions of Laura uh, have been very precise and very, very clear. It's a perfect uh, analysis of the presentation, but also of the paper in which uh, the presentation is based. Any case now is um, the, the key issue of this seminar is how uh, street gangs who were born face to face in the street corner, in the streets, in the public space, uh, evolve to be also present in the cyberspace, in the in other kind of corners, the, in the cyber corners. And of course, the quest, the uh, Ariana's question of uh, about how social, uh, how gang la life online reflects uh, gang life uh, off offline, is is a is a key question, not only for gangs but for all social groups. Now uh, we have a moment for questions, comments, and reflections of the participants in this seminar. So, who who will start? Take voice or uh, the hand on. Uh, Miriam, I think, uh, are you able to, to make a, a question or comment? Hi. Yeah. Hi. I thought it was really interesting to hear about your project and especially to hear about the idea of actually involving gang members in research. Um, I I work within psychology, but I've not really seen that considered before. So. I was wondering if you guys ran into any issues in terms of managing risk with looking at how that might work. 
um, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think that um, I'm not sure what kind of risk are you talking exactly, but uh, yeah, there are many uh, for us, for them, for you know. Uh, so, in the case of social media, uh, we have already people involved in the project, so. Um, so they are informed about the risk, about what we are going to do, they know everything. We are trying to involve more people uh, participating in the project, especially for the, the, the last, where well, the interviews at the end of the analysis and our, for the focus group. But Maria and Cesar, who are currently working on the project, uh, they, 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 they actually, they are even before the project starts. Here I think that about the risk and everything, I think that Carles can answer you better because this, this is something that they have to, um, to have in mind all the time and they have also to, to, to explain to the European Union that it sometimes is complicated because you, are, you have a research project and, and and you have to 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 explain everything, the ethical issues, etc. And I know that they have they have to fight a lot uh, to explain and to make comprehensible what this project is 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 doing. No, because as you say, usually we go with research people and 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 we go back no and write about them, but we don't introduce them uh, inside. So in this way, if Carlos wants, I think that uh, he can give you more information, even Adam or, 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 or Maria. Uh, yes, maybe Adam can inform about, uh, we have a, a protocol of, of risk um, reduction in, in the Transgan project. But also, of course, there are specific risks uh, online that are uh, different, a bit different from offline. In the streets, of course, the, the, the physical risks uh, are more under, under, under the field. Online, there are other kind more symbolic, for instance, the hate speech or the hate interactions that can develop later uh, also, by uh, why why not to why not to say the the police are um, that's um, providing all the social interactions by gang mem members online on, on social networks on Facebook etc. But this is not our uh, our guilty the research because the the police and the uh, security forces are always trying to, to follow uh, the internet uh, uh, scene. The only thing uh, we researcher, researchers, uh, if we do research online, uh, do is doing more visible this space for the, for the worst and for the best. Maybe Adam, you can complete my, my, my opinion. Yeah, sure. So I, I kind of thought my name might come up as soon as I heard the word risk in the research pro in the research process. So um, yeah, I mean, it's I guess I guess with this kind of research, there's always going to it's inherently going to carry some risk. This is the nature of this kind of research, and so we, the other or the only other option is what is is to not do it. Um, and so if we accept that, we, that it's necessary to have this knowledge, if we accept that this is of social value, then we have to accept that there are inherent risks with the research project. And so the, the strategy that we tried to take is to identify what those projects started and to, to, to take them as seriously as possible. So part of that was me being involved in the team as an internal ethics advisor we have an ethics, an internal, an external ethics board, which, which is only specific to this project. And we have reporting mechanisms and, and managerial, continual managerial oversight that, that in, a, in other kinds of ethnography probably wouldn't be that hands on, but it's about knowing what's going on in the field and it's about being able to respond to, to any risks that emerge as they emerge. Um, but I think in terms of having ex-gang members or gang members, I mean, this is part of the knowledge. This is how we manage risk. I mean, you know, that our field workers have relationships with gangs or are former gang members and that may, means they're best placed to be able to manage those risks 
in a culturally sensitive way and to be able to perceive what is a risk and what isn't a risk you know in a way so i think that the part of the strategy that we've been developing is to have that kind of that knowledge is an asset in managing risks if you see what i'm saying so i think i'll i'd, I'd, I'd leave it there. <laughs> No, thank you. And I'm sorry, my camera's on the fritz. So I don't know if I'm appearing or if I'm just a black bloop. But thank you for all your answers. Um, it's, I work with managing risk within psychology. So I'm a bit biased, but it's an area of interest for me. <laughs> thank you to, for your question too. Uh, are there other questions or comments? Not <laughs> when yes, I have, you I have? have one oh, okay. more, te <laughs> more technical is the question of the uh, the, so the, the source, uh, which network the the fact that Twitter is the only open open source to be analyzed is of course is a problem because we know qualitatively that uh, that gang members um, are using other social networks, mainly Facebook, but uh, today also TikTok and, and, and Instagram. But how do we combine this mix? Because in your analysis, um, mixed methods were also very important. Not, no, and and the, the, the evolution of so, uh, media studies and gang studies, I think, uh, go away into mixed methods, not separate qualitative and quantitative, but uh, to use mixed methods. And also is what we are trying to do, not only with your project related to Transgang, but with a project related to Levan, including uh, an, uh, a network, network analysis in Spain, in Ecuador, in El Salvador. So how do we can manage uh, to use, to combine the use of the analysis of Twitter, that it's very general, with the most more micro and qualitative analysis of Facebook and other. Also, for the analysis of the image that are very important in this in this case, no, the photographs and the etc. So, first of all, um, yeah, that access is a big problem in this case and of course I think that I, I said before um, our behavior not only um, user street uh, groups members also our own behavior is different if we are talking in WhatsApp in Twitter in Facebook in Instagram no if we are doing um, reels or what we are doing no um, it changes so this we wanted actually we wanted to study also WhatsApp we ask some members to to permission, uh, but here emerges two, uh, two different things. On the one hand, okay, we want it because this is more personal, more real. No, it's something internal. It's, it's where we talk um, more natural. Uh, okay, we want to know how they. Um, um, they interact there. But at the same time, it's okay, this is something really, really personal. Is it ethical to be there? It's not. So finally, we decided to, to stop and not to, to go there. Even, even I think that even if we wanted, we, we couldn't, you know? Um, so then we decided, okay, let's see where we can do the analysis. As you have seen, most of the papers analyze Twitter, and Twitter is, I see, um, um, I have, for example, Cesar in different uh, social media networks, and I, I, uh, his uh, behavior is really different in Twitter than in Instagram. For me, the less interesting is maybe as a researcher is the the Twitter account, no? Because it's the most public uh, profile, no? Uh, so this is something we have to have in mind. It's different. Uh, Facebook, even us we interact and we our behavior is different in facebook than in instagram than in TikTok, than in twitter so we have to have in mind that we are studying different uh, communities uh, in different contexts so 
I think this is not a problem to uh, many papers actually um, they study only or most of them only one social media um, we want to combine all of them and publish it all together we don't want to to split okay it's interesting probably academically thinking uh, we will have more publication if we talk okay one publication about twitter another about facebook but we want to mix all together because we think that it uh, the the rich the richer the most interesting thing is combining all these no okay because maybe um of course we will have big data from twitter and youtube uh, and we will see a way of, of interacting of behavior and then we will have uh, um facebook more qualitative uh but i think that we are going to find different behaviors different ways because not because they are gang members just because it's context is different and we act differently in academ in an academic context in in our home so it's the same for social media so we are going to try to mix the results and to have a, i think that is something that is is not uh, has not been done uh, to see okay in twitter latin king latin kings or or people using the the these keywords are acting in this way here in this way here we will, I, I expect to find some uh, points in common, but also uh, different uh, things. And, and it's an expectation. I still <laughs> have to see, we have to see, but uh, uh, I think that it will be something interesting to mix all of them, all the different contexts. So thank you for your question. <laughs> I don't know if Candy were willing to, to make a question. No, Carles, me encendió por accidente. Gracias. <laughs> okay. no, no te preocupes. Bien, bienvenida eres. Welcome. Okay. Anyway, if you have any question, any recommendation, any advice, I um, will be more than happy if you send me, if you send me in another context, if you don't want to ask me now, um, or, or, or you have an idea later. Um, because this is something is like, okay, what we want from the social media analysis, no? Uh, so as, at the end, uh, we have detected that many studies have focused on, in knowing what uh, gang members are doing online, and we are going to do the same. We have a spe but uh, most of the studies are uh, searching for violence or the relation between online and offline, offline violence. And we are, um, our focus is different. We want to search for mediation, for other kind of practices. But at the end, is okay. We are searching what are they doing online. So if you have any. In specific interest, something that you want to see different. Oh, I think that it will be interesting if you focus on that, on that, because sometimes it's like you need um, space and time to see it. And, so, and sometimes, uh, uh, as we in Spanish say, no, like new eyes can give another point of view. So <laughs> maybe I'm not able to see something, and, and you. All of you after this presentation maybe you have some idea and of course as you know we have another um colleague working on media representations that i think that it will be really interesting comparing our results with the media uh, representation so social media versus uh, traditional media representation i think that it can be could be really interesting Perfect. So, uh, uh, as we have all your emails, uh, people who, who are participating in this seminar, we will try to send um, the certifying of this participation, but also, if possible, the, the paper or the link to the paper, to the article that Ariana um, and others, including me, have uh, published this, this article. Um, now, uh, um, uh, we will finish the session, but um, and I think uh, it's uh, Katia. Katia, sorry, uh, sorry, Katia. Could you could you make yeah. final words? Yeah. 
and also for, um, if, you, if you can send if you can send this uh, this paper to to the participants in the session okay um thank you um, all for uh, all our system uh, we give you uh, the certificate or uh, say uh, carlos and um, we hope uh, see you at the next seminar